Hi, welcome to the Get 800 channel, the only place you need to be for SAT math hints, tips, and tactics. Everything you need is right here so that you won't have to worry about your SAT math score when it comes time to apply to your first choice college. In this video, I'd like to talk about the features you should know how to use on your graphing calculator for test day. I always recommend that you use a TI-84 or comparable calculator for the SAT. It's very important that you are comfortable with your calculator on test day, so make sure that you are consistently practicing with the calculator that you plan to use. Also, make sure that your calculator has fresh batteries on the day of the test. Nobody is going to supply a calculator for you if yours dies. Now I want to take some time to go over the most important features that you should know how to use on your graphing calculator. First, you should practice entering complicated computations in a single step and make sure that you know when you have to insert parentheses. In general, there are four times when you should be using parentheses in your calculator. Around numerators of fractions, around denominators of fractions, around exponents, and whenever you actually see parentheses in the expression. For example, let's look at the expression 7x plus 3 divided by 2x minus 11, and let's substitute a 5 in for x and see how it should look on your calculator. The calculator computation should look like this. One more example, 3x minus 8 all raised to the 2x minus 9. In your calculator, that should look like this. Next, always try to clear the screen before using it in a new problem. The big screen allows you to check over your computations very easily. Press the answer button to use your last answer in the next computation. To press the answer button, you have to first hit the second key followed by the minus symbol. Next, you can press second enter to bring up your last computation for editing. This is especially useful when you are plugging in answer choices or guessing and checking. Also, you can press second enter over and over again to cycle backwards through all the computations you have ever done. This can be extremely useful for pulling up a computation you've done a few steps earlier. Make sure that you know where the square root symbol is, the pi button, and the caret symbol for exponentiation so that you can reach them quickly and easily. A nice feature is that you could change a decimal to a fraction by pressing math, enter, enter. Exactly like that in that sequence. First math, then enter, then enter again. Now, if you press the math button on your calculator, you have several menus. In the first menu, you can take cube roots and nth roots for any n. If you scroll right to PRB, which stands for probability, you have buttons for permutations and combinations. These are labeled NPR and NCR. Those were the most useful items. I'm going to give you a few more that are not as important, but they can be useful in certain situations. You can press the Y equals button to enter a function and then hit zoom followed by 6 to graph it in a standard window. Also, practice using the window button to adjust the viewing window of your graph. You can practice using the trace button to move along the graph and look at some of the points that are plotted. With the calc button, which you hit by hitting the second button followed by trace, you will get a menu of useful items. For example, if you select zero, then you can tell where the graph hits the x-axis, or equivalently, where the function is zero. The minimum or maximum buttons can be used to find the vertex of a parabola, and selecting intersect will find the point of intersection of two graphs. So in summary, I always recommend using a graphing calculator for the SAT preferably a TI-84 or equivalent. 
There are only a few features of the graphing calculator that you really need to know to use your calculator effectively on test day, but make sure that you practice using these features regularly before actually taking the test. Please review all the information presented in this video until you internalize the features of your calculator that you should be practicing with. If you prefer to read the information rather than watch the video again, you can visit my blog. The URL is below in the description.